Today, we're gonna talk about money. I think for a lot of us, money isn't something we talk about every day. Maybe you don't talk about it with your friends and maybe it never comes up at the dinner table with your family. But whether you realize it or not, it's definitely something that you think about. We all do. I think when it comes to money, all of us have some kind of awareness of what we think that it means to have it. Think about it, TikTok influencers, right? Or Instagram, they're young, they're cool. And what do they all have in common? They're rich. They're making a lot of money with each post and we know it. They show it in the way they dress, places they live, the things they buy, the vacations they take. I think a lot of us would admit there are times where we wish our lives looked a little bit more like that. I'd have all the status, influence, and fame I could ever want if I was like that. A lot of us are tempted to see money as the answer to the things that we want in life. We think if we have enough to get that next cool thing that we'll be happy. But the thing I'm learning is that there's always going to be a next thing. That cycle never ends. We get more and more and more of what we want, looking at money the way that creates an appetite or desire for more. And that ultimately leads to a lot of disappointment and frustration. No matter how you feel about money or what your status with it is, here's what I want you to know. Money isn't bad. In fact, money does matter. It can solve a lot of problems in the world. Money can actually fix some of the things in your life. It can give you a roof over your head, a meal on your table, and help you feel safe and taken care of in your home. Money itself isn't the problem here. It's the heart or the attitude that we have that can lead us to problems. Our attitude towards money matters. It matters more than the amount of money that we have in our pocket because this attitude affects what we do with it and how we think about it. It affects the way we live and that's why no matter how much or how little we have, my hope for today is that we'll be able to change our hearts towards money. The good news is that people have been talking about attitudes towards money for a really long time and I think that we can learn from them. About 2,000 years ago, a guy named Paul wrote a letter to this friend named Timothy. Think of this as an old-fashioned version of text message. Paul was a little older and wiser than Timothy, so he often wrote down important things he wanted his friend to know. One of these things that he wrote about was money. Take a look at the first part of what Paul said to Timothy. Paul was saying here that money isn't bad. It isn't what brings us problems or frustrations or anger or judgment. As Paul put it, the love of money that can lead us to all kinds of evil. And that's the problem. If we aren't paying attention to our love or our want for money, it can influence us and to things that we don't normally do. Things like lying or manipulating other people to get what we want or taking what isn't ours or staying in bad relationships or refusing to share what we have or saying yes to things that we know aren't good for us, or acting out of anger and frustration because we don't have what we need. Take a look at what Paul said next. What Paul meant here is that if you crave or love money, you'll never feel like you have enough. And sometimes we find ourselves really focused on something that we want, like money. We run the risk of letting it affect every area of our life. And that includes our faith. We might even find ourselves looking to money to meet the needs that Jesus wants to fill in our lives. We sometimes use money to provide us with things Jesus already promises to give us. Is it wrong to want stuff? To look forward to being able to buy cool shoes or finally get a phone or take that trip or even just help your family? Definitely not. There's nothing wrong with wanting stuff like that, but we need to be careful and not let our attitude towards money become something that we want more than anything else in our lives. Jesus promises that he'll give us many good things and we don't wanna miss those things because we're looking for them somewhere else. So what do we do? What attitude are we supposed to have? Well, let's take a look at something Jesus shared with his friends and followers to give us some more insight.
Jesus was telling us that the things we value and think are important are our treasures. They're what we focus a lot of our energy on. The things we treasure impact things like who we are, what we do, and what we want. If we make money a material thing, our treasure, that's what we'll focus our lives on. That's what will be most important to us. It'll be where our heart is. But here's the thing, money, what it can buy, may seem valuable now, but these things are temporary. They don't last beyond our lifetime here on earth. But when we focus on the treasure and things that last forever, our hearts will be in the right place. What are these things that last forever? Well, they're things in the kingdom of God. Here on earth and have an impact in heaven. They're things that God values and really cares about. Sometimes money is needed to invest our hearts into things God cares about. Things like using our money to help people in a way or a need, buying a Bible so that they can get to know God better. But other times, they're more material things. They're not always things that money can buy. They're things like having a relationship with God, showing love to the people around us, being kind and compassionate to others, respecting those who are different than us, being generous with what we have, and meeting the needs of other people, and even having faith that God will take care of us, and using our words to build others up, trying to live as God tells us to live. All of these things, these are things that we should treasure. These are things that we should focus our hearts and minds on. And in fact, God calls us to invest our lives and resources, including our money, into those things. Because the truth is, those are the things that will truly last. Money is something that matters while we're here on earth. But there are other things that matter so much more. Things that God wants us to love and care about. See, money matters, but your attitude around it matters more. So how can we be sure that we have the right attitude when it comes to money? Well, we can start by asking ourselves two things. First, how do you feel about money? Do your feelings about money affect how you act, talk, or live? Do you feel angry or embarrassed when the topic of money comes up? Do you obsess over all the things you could potentially buy with the money that you do have? Do you spend a lot of time thinking about money? Do you compare yourself to others when it comes to what you have or don't have? Do you find yourself doing things that you wouldn't normally do in order to get money? Then ask yourself, what change do you need to make your attitude towards money better? Maybe it's shifting the way that you use it if you have it. Maybe it's addressing some of the anger you feel around it. Maybe it's asking for help when you need it. Or maybe it's changing the way that you see people who have more or less than you. And because it matters so much, it's important that we keep talking about it together as we figure it out. While talking about money might not be the easiest thing to do sometimes, remember you're not alone in figuring this thing out. That's why we're here for you. So that we have a place where we can talk about what we're thinking and learning and ask questions together.